Why I believe that Sabbath is God's day, not Sunday. Sabbath got changed in about the 1400s or actually over the centuries uh, from when the Roman Empire became diverse from the rest. Um, she became a, a church. The Roman Empire became a church in 348 AD, I believe it is. And for 1260 years, which is three and a half centuries, and it's all biblical because a thousand years is like one day and one day is like a thousand years. So through the dark ages, the Roman Empire Catholic Church filled her cup with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus' testimony. And anybody that kept Jewish holidays or Jewish or scripture, we'll call it, was a heretic. And Jesus even said when he was still, still alive, he, uh, the disciples asked him, what, what are, what will we know? And, or how will we know that these things are going to take place? And Jesus said unto them, he says, for her iniquities are already at work. Now there was, in, I think it's Revelations with Daniel talks about the four beasts. So throughout history, from Babylon to Egypt to Medo Persia, there was, there was a lion, a leopard, a bear. And what the Roman Empire did was it went and amalgamated all those three. And she was a very, she was the biggest beast ever to rule, which later on that means, I mean, but the beast got a mortal wound, but did live, right? So in 1798, Napoleon grabbed that crown out of the Pope's hand and arrested all the popes, but they did not kill them. So the Roman Empire became very small, became a small horn in the Vatican, which is 15 miles wide by five miles long or something like that. It's very small, but very powerful. They lost their power in 1798 because, because King James and, and a lot of the people stood up and wrote the King James Bible, 1611, all right? Uh, the gunpowder plot, if you look it up, um, they tried, right when King James was almost done writing this book, they tried, the Jesuits tried, which is part of the Roman Catholic Church, tried to kill him. But they did not succeed. And God's word was translated from Hebrew 99% perfectly. Because King James and all the, all the people could see that that was the Antichrist. They, they exalt themselves above all that is called God, that is God sitting in the temple, stewing themselves. They are God. I think it's Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians or 1 Thessalonians 2. But I started getting on this about three years ago. And I, I mean, I grew up as a, going to church every Sunday and worshiping every Sunday and we're calling Sunday, uh, God's day. But yet scripture shows nowhere that that is God's day. And we have been led astray. I think we have been deceived. It says even the elect will be deceived if possible in the end. And we are, we are in that day. I believe I, I kind of think we're almost in tribulation. There's seven years. There's three and a half years tribulation. Three and a half years, great tribulation, which, which the trumpets will be laid out and there is going to be what the world calls major climate change. But reason I believe that, that Sabbath is God's day is because the Pope is sitting on the United Nations right now, dictating to the world through climate change that we need a common day of rest for our common home. Because we are the problem. And they, they're not far off on that. Because we are a sinful nation already. Like we, are, we have such idolatry in our lives that, that we have forgotten who God is and what we should do. It, it's interesting because even, I think it's Daniel 11, 37 talks about that they will not, that, that they will not, these God, they will worship the God of their fathers. They do not desire women and they will worship a God of forces. Look it up. I think it's Daniel eleven thirty seven. Look it up. King James version. I always go to King James because there's too many living translations that change just a, just a little bit. 
finally put a little piece of poop in your pie and I didn't tell you where it is. Would you, would you eat it? <laughs> uh, but so now about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I started, I, I wanted to know truth because the truth sets you free, right? Study my word, meditate on it daily and only then you will succeed. It's a very complex book, but once we under, I, I found once I understand all those beasts from Babylon to Egypt to, to the Roman Empire and how the Roman Empire controlled all of Europe and that beast got a mortal wound, that Roman Catholic Church. And the second beast, it says in Revelations, will give the first beast back to power again. And the Roman Empire is sitting on the United Nations right now. And the United Nations is in control through sustainable development. It's a whole nother story. But I'm going to, I I decided that I'm going to make a video of this because it's interesting how the world is going. It's it's falling apart, but according to scripture, it's falling perfectly into place. And I started reading in the New Testament because it's Jesus's word, right? It's his testimony. All of the Christians go, I, I follow Jesus. I follow the testimony of Jesus, right? But really, that's not truth. That's not truth. I mean, I've been deceived on many things and you know, I've made many mistakes, but I had to admit my mistakes. Some people, they just get angry. I try and explain this to them, and it's amazing the anger that comes out. Like even to prestigious men in my town that are are all of God, but yet that anger comes out right away when I say, because no man wants to be deceived. No man wants to admit but anyway, so I started reading the first chapter of New Testament and I already have read it, but I never really, I guess the more we read, the more we understand. And I need to read it slow sometimes because I want to learn. I'm tired of stumbling. I want to do what's right. And I can see that we are going to worship this beast yet, or not we, but the whole world does. The seven heads, they all, she sits, like if you take all the major continents, they're all worshipped on Sunday, right? And you know what I, what's interesting is Jane gave me a Quran a while back and <laughs> I actually read just a little bit of it. And the first page that I came to is their Quran talks about Sabbath too, but they celebrate Friday. It's interesting because why does the Quran talk about Sabbath? They were there when Abraham and, and, uh, and all that and Moses and they talk about the Moses' commandments and, and yet they're off track. And, and I mean, it's brother against brother, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom already. The whole world is, is screwed up because of this Corona. But I believe that is the refining fire because there is major anxieties in this world. But, Anyways, back to in Matthew. I think it's uh like 10, 10, a little bit more than 10 times it talks about it. Like Matthew 5, 17 says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am uh, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And that's another one. Okay, so that's Matthew, that's Matthew 5, 17, 19. Then we go to Matthew 8. Four, uh, and that, uh, where is Matthew 8, 4? Oh, I went too far. Matthew 8, 4. And Jesus said unto them, red letters. Jesus said unto them, see thou that no man go thy way and stew thyself to the priest. Offer thy gift that Moses for the testimony unto them. So it's, it's uh, Moses' testimony, Moses' his commandments. And then we go to, uh, 12, 12, 8, 12, 8. Let's see what it says. And that one says, for the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath day. And I believe kind of we're all sons of man because God states that we, that we should call no man our father. Never mind the Holy Father in the Vatican. God, God is our father. And Jesus is Lord over Sabbath. 
So why do we change that? It's a question to me. I, I want no truth. You guys, you guys tell me all over the place, but, um, so if we're now we're in 12, let's go to, uh, let's go to 15, 15, three, 15, nine and 15, three. I've written down for some reason, uh, 15, three, right? Okay. But he answers and says unto them, why do thy tr transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? And that's interesting because what is transgression defined in the Bible? It is sin. Sin is transgression of the law. The law is really good. Like the commandments are really good. There's one oddball in there, right? I mean, they're all like love thy neighbor, love, love. Like it's all about love. I, I, I see that very clearly, but, but there's one oddball and that said, remember my Sabbath and keep it holy. So do not worship all over it. It, it talks about that, that. That worship issue. But, okay, so then 15, 15, 9. What does it say? 15, 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, commandments of men. There we go again, right? We're, we're off track. It's all about worship. And, you know, somebody said to me a while back that, that, you know, well, we're going to be through this pandemic. We're going to be all, we're going to be all like God will protect us. Well, just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and in Daniel's day, when they threw him in, they did not follow what King Herod had doctrined. And here it says, for the teachings, for the teaching for doctrines commanded of men. Again, testimony of Jesus, right? Like, I hear so many people talk about that, but really, they don't really look at it that deep. But then, okay, so we're, then let's go to 16.9. Where is 16.9 here? Uh, why do I, oh, 16.19, sorry. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whoever thou shalt bind on earth shall bound in heaven, and whatever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I have that one written down. It doesn't talk directly about commandments or Sabbath, but if we're binding, if we're binding a man's day as God's day, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Right? Shouldn't we be binding what God does? That's just a question. Okay. So then I got, uh, what I got here? Uh, I got 17, 9, 7, oh, yeah, 1721. Let's see what 1721 says. There's lots of them. Like, I, I can't even sometimes, uh, Oh, 1721, I think I said, right? That one doesn't do it. Okay, so then let's go to, uh, I thought I had an 18 here, but I got 1917. Let's try that. 1917. 1917. And he said unto them, why callest thou me God? There is None good but one, that is God. But if thou wit enter into life, keep the commandments. And all, this is red letters. Jesus is saying, why, why, uh, and he said unto them, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. And that is our Father in heaven. Jesus says this, like red letters. But if thou wit enter into life, which he is the way, the truth, and the life, keep thy commandments. Keep the commandments, the, the commandments. So, I don't understand. Like, I grew up in church thinking, okay, we love God. And I mean, I didn't always see it, but I, I think I... 
I mean, I, I over my life, I can see that there is an Alpha and Omega, a, a, a one God in heaven. And that is our Father in heaven. Jesus comes to testify for his Father's name, it says. His Father. He's trying to teach us. He, God sent him to give us his living word so that we understand. No. Some people say, ah, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, twice I found in the New Testament, and one time it says, why thou do thy judges thy brother for what days he keeps? Let him be fully persuaded himself. Oh, fully persuaded himself. Hmm. I don't judge anybody for what days. And in those days, they had many, many Sabbaths. Like, it wasn't just Saturday. It was, they had the Feast of Tabernacles. They had the Feast of, the, like, they, they did lots of things. And God says in the next one where it says, why do thou judge us that what day he keeps? Uh, what, what, uh, what days he keeps? What Sabbaths he keeps again? As long as it, it's given unto God. But it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that there is God's day. We can, we can, I can go to church on Tuesday afternoon too and worship on Tuesday and, and say, you know what? I, I, and study his word on Tuesday too. It doesn't have to exactly be Sabbath, but we, it, it is very lukewarm, our world. Unto life he keepeth, and I'm going to read it again. And he said unto him, why thou callest me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wit enter into life, keep the commandments. Okay, so, I mean, can't say it anymore. This is just Matthew. It is all over the New Testament. But that was 18, right? Or that was 19. 1917. Uh, let's go to uh, Matthew 24, 15. Matthew 24, 15. Oh, no. Sorry. No. Um, and this is in great, it, this one started off as great tribulation because it separates itself there. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoke of by Daniel the prophet in the holy place, who readeth him, let him understand. Okay, that one doesn't say it, but but what the abomination is, is, is that Catholic church. And she stands in the holy place. Right? When ye therefore see the abomination of, and it makes the church desolate because now they do not serve God anymore. That's all back in Revelations yet. Right? So we're going to see this again. Spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. It's interesting. Verse 20, what do I got here? Oh, okay, that's why I have it here, because it, it's all talking. Um, and, and here we go, Matthew, uh, I'm going to start at Matthew 20. Uh, so instead of 15, I mean, I can read it all here. But, but I pray ye that your flight... Be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for there shall be great tribulation. So we know that this is, Sabbath is right up to the tribulation. Right up to the very end of time. I mean, he even says it a couple times, like, heaven and earth will pass away, but my Father's commandments will stand forever. Not one jot or one tittle will remove. Right? It, it, so it, it is interesting because, like, even in in the, in Revelations, it talks about uh, he will wage war uh, on those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's uh, I think it says like uh, talks about those commandments and uh, the doctrine like uh, probably ten times in Revelations too. Like it's always referring back to that. But anyways, so then we go to Matthew twenty eight twenty twenty eight. What did I have? There we go. 28. Oh, here's 28. Oh, now I'm in. Right. Teaching them to observe all things what, 
uh, what over, what's over I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Right. So what did he teach us? What did he teach us? That, that his father's law is still binding? I mean, he gave us grace for the transgression that we make. I mean, love covers a multitude of sins, but if we love God, I, over and over in here, it says, if we love God, we will obey his commandments. Jesus said it a few times in red letters. That's just Matthew of, of those. And some of the other chapters, like they talk about it way more. Like if we go to, uh, like I know, like first, second, um, or, uh, first, second, third, uh, Paul's ap apostle, right? Like we, I've heard guys tell me before, well, we want to, how do they say that again? We want to, we want to follow the, the epistles or not the epistles, but the, hmm, they call it something in their, in their, uh, when they, when they go to get taught by the world on what, on what the Bible is, uh, hmm, can't think of it now, but I've never been, been in there to go for a preacher. I just study God's word. This, this, this word is, is sufficient for us. If we, if we ask God to ask, seek, knock, I think it is, uh, uh, ask, seek, knock, and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. If you, if you put ask, seek, knock together, you put a dot s dot a. All we have to do is pray. All we have to do is pray. And it's interesting because, you know, we're in, we're in crazy days right now. If you've, if you listen to the radio for a couple decades, you've seen this climate change creeping up and the Pope is claiming that we need a common day of rest on on Sunday for our common home. So we're worshiping a God of forces again. But God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the heavens and the earth. He didn't separate that, that sea for Moses one day after or one day for. He separated that sea, which I believe probably was an earthquake. And it was perfect because it receded the sea perfect, perfect timing. When Jesus died, there was a three hour or a nine hour, three hour eclipse and a great earthquake. Everyone repented. Everyone repented. But if you take a look at, at what is coming, there is major climate. Like I think Revelate, Revelation 8 talks about there, there's going to be earthquakes and famines and floods and pestilence. Are we looking at pestilence right now? I don't believe so. I don't believe Corona is real. I believe it's the common cold and they have tricked everybody because they, Satan is the father of lies just with the censoring and all that. It's like, uh, yesterday, somebody sent me a link to try and vote on whether all school kids should get vaccinated. And I don't think so. So I voted no, but I tried to send that to a whole bunch of people and none of them could open it. It's interesting. You want us to vote, but you really don't want us to. You want to make it difficult. But throughout history, freedom has always been difficult. We are weak. I don't even think we deserve our freedom anymore. We are a sinful nation. And we need to come back to God. Right. And uh, like in Noah's day, flooded. We don't understand how God has created all this. And I don't even try to understand too terribly hard, but I can see that he is in control throughout, throughout what is his testimony and everything. You know, at the end it says, uh, they worship the beast that had the deadly wound, but did live. Uh, beast of nations, time to tell on my grave. I mean, there is so many things that acknowledge to this. It, it, it's interesting. Like you, you look, like I, I, if you want my opinion, let's let's say let's go to Revelations for a minute. You can go and study. I can give you all those verses from all the things. If you want to go and read all what Sabbath is, like it, it's just amazing. Okay, here's one. Here's one. Just I, before I go to Revelations, I'm gonna I'm gonna read one here for you. Uh, Revelations. Uh, sorry, Second uh, Thessalonians 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Christ 
and by the gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us. The Christ uh, of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin revealed the son of perdition. So, what is the falling away? What is the falling away? So, somewhere there has to be a great falling away from Christ. You think that could be Sabbath, from Sabbath to Sunday? I, I kind of am leaning a good 90% unless somebody can show me. I, no, I'm leaning 99% already, unless somebody can show me different. And not yet one prestigious man has been able to show me that. And I have tried, I tell you, I have approached lots of people on this. Because I don't want to be deceived and I want to know if what I'm saying is true. Show me wrong. Show me wrong in scripture that I can read it and say. And that man of sin revealed. And here who, here's who he is. Who opposes and exalts himself about all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, stewing himself, he is God. Who in the world would stew themselves in the temple? If you had a preacher right now in your Christian church trying to tell you to call him the Holy Father, and that you should worship him, he is God, he is a manifest of God. There's been many popes over the years that say, say that they are the manifest of Jesus Christ. And which is very interesting because, you know, the number of his name, those who have wisdom know the number of his name. Popes, when they get inaugurated, like uh, Pope Benedict, Pope, uh, Pope Paul or whatever, all the popes over the history, they get a crown on top of their head. And on that crown, if you Google it, it says Vicarius Philly D in Latin which means vicar of Christ, replacement of Christ. But take Vicarious Philly D, Google it. I can post a picture on here if you want. Google that, Vicarious Philly D, because they are the replacement of Christ. In Latin or in Roman numerals, there is a, there is a, a, a numerical value for every letter in the alphabet. And if you take Vicarious Philly D, Vicarious Philly D, guess what number that comes to? Replacement of Christ, Vicar of Christ. Guess what that Vicarious Philly D comes to? 666. So now, so now, who opposes himself above all that is called, or, or sorry, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, right? So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God stewing himself, he is God. Through the dark ages, that Roman Empire Catholic Church has filled her cup with the blood of the saints. She martyred many Christians, many followers of Christ. And then she changes God's day. She keeps all the other commandments. Actually, if you Google it, the Catholic Church has gotten rid of one and changed one of the commandments in their commandments. You go to their commandments of their Roman Empire, Catholic Church, and you compare them to the King James Version, go and look at it. And, and I forget where the, it's found, but it says that he, that, that he comes to change times, dates, and laws. Okay, there you go. You know what? I'm going to do on Revelations yet. And then I'm going to go through Matthew. But you go and read. I think I said all the names of Matthew. And there is in Luke, there's, there's, there's in Mark, there's seven, Mark 1, 44, Mark 2, 27, 28, Mark 7, 7 to 10, Mark 10, 19, uh, Mark 12, 29 to 31, Mark 16, 20, right? It just, the list goes on. Luke, Luke 1 verse 6, Luke 5 verse 14, Luke 6 verse 5, 
uh, Luke 16, verse 16 and 17, Luke 18, 19 and 20, Luke 24, 25, 26, Luke 24, 44, Luke 23, 56. I mean, I, I can give you all of them if you want, but I would suggest you go and study his word, his testimony, because in the end, God is coming for those who keep his commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you produce this fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And love is patient, love is kind, love is enduring, love is not boastful, love holds no records of wrongs. Love is not easily angered but and rejoices in truth. Does not boast, does not envy, it is not self-seeking. It does not rejoice in the misfortunes of others. We all stumble with those things. And if we think we don't, then we don't need God. Anyway, my crazy thoughts. <laughs>